Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Richard Moglin and welcome to kind of part two of my TC2000 tutorial. So the topics we're gonna to be covering in this video are how to load and uh, program PCF codes just like uh, my dots and my cell signal. And then we'll also transition and I'll explain um, how to add columns here and also how to program those as well. So to start off with the video, we're gonna be talking about um, how to add any PCF code and make it look kind of how you want. And to illustrate this point, we're going to be using my MACD cell indicator, which is defined by this code right here. And this code will be in the description of this video. All you have to do is copy that, and then you can follow along with what I'm doing. So to add any indicator to this chart, you want to go over here to where it says whatever stock you're looking at daily. You're going to click on that, click add plot here. And then if you want to make your own thing, you go to formulas. But if you want to use a pre-made thing, you can find that. Uh, down below in the indicators already listed. So we're going to create a new formula. So let's go ahead and click here and then click right indicator formula. And then we're going to paste the code um, right in this text box right here. And you want to name it anything. So I'm going to name it MACD um, cell signal. So now that you've done that, if everything is correct, um, it will show you the calculation speed. And this can vary depending on what calculations you're doing in your PCF code. And you can also test it with a symbol. Um, you can see that currently Microsoft does not have um, a MACD cell signal. So, um, but that's it. That's all you gotta do. So you press OK, and then you can see it doesn't appear on the chart. So what happened? Um, you actually have to go over and add it even after creating it. So let's click Add Plot here, and then you search for whatever you typed in. So MACD cell signal, and you want to scale it. Um, with the um, stock. So there you go. So right now it appears as a spike right here, but that can be easily changed. You just go over to the indicator, um, click it, click edit, and then right here is kind of the properties of the indicator and how it will appear on the chart. So right now the plot style is a line, but you can make that a histogram, you can make that a dot, you can make an area, and you can make a last value horizontal. Um, for this, I like having it as a line, and you can also go over and change the color, and also down here, change the opacity and how prominent it is on your screen. So I'm go, gonna go over and leave it how I usually have it, which is gray, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, you can also change the data source if you would wish and choose another indicator. Um, and also you can go ahead and label it on the chart as well. So I'm going to call this MACD cell signal once again. And there you go. Now that's how you add any PCF code into TC2000 onto the main chart. So now that we've briefly covered how to add custom PCF indicators onto the main chart, let's go over how to use these columns. So this is one of my favorite parts about TC2000 is on your watch list, you can add these different columns that tell you different information um, about the stock and how it's doing. So these are the main columns that I use in this program. I've got the weekly change, the price, the percent change for that day, the volume buzz, uh, the 10 for stochastic value, um, the value of C over C250, um, the volatility the last 10 days, um, whether it's in a red, white, blue pattern for daily and weekly, and then whether it's a relative strength new high uh, versus the SPY. So this is my overall setup that I use. So briefly talking about what I like to see in these columns, I want to see as many check marks over here for each stock. So if it's got three checks, that's the best possible scenario. I want to see the volatility um, of the last 10 days be less than 10%. So um, Aries is a good example, um, as well as BWXT. Um, but going back here, um, you can see that AMD over the last 250 days has increased um, 100%. So basically, I want to see near two for this value, and the higher the better. The 10 for stochastic is what I use mainly to determine whether or not a stock is currently extended uh, from a recent run up. So um, before I buy any stock, I want to make sure that this value is less than 75. And that just helps me um, prevent from buying extended and buy a stock that's going to quickly. Uh, turn around and have a pullback. The volume buzz is also very 
helpful because it's very important in the beginning of the day when you're buying uh, different stocks that you know what the relative volume is versus the normal. And if a stock is increasing or decreasing on plus 100% volume, that tells you something about how that stock is going to perform that day. For instance, AMD, you can see, is down almost um, 3% on above average volume according to that day. Um, and you can see it also has a MACD sell signal on this last bar. So it had above average volume um, yesterday and was down and today as well. So that's showing you that there's a weakness in this long run up that it had and that it might be pulling back in the near future. So that is the overall layout of my columns. Let's show you now how to actually add them. So you want to go over here and click this plus bar right here, which is the add column button. And you can either add a value column, which is like my C over C250, or a condition column, which instead of a number outputs like a check mark, a green circle, that type of thing. So first, let's show you the value column. And you're going to click that. And you can either choose from a predetermined one, or you can write a new formula. So just for this example, we're going to do C minus C40. So the close um, today minus the close 40 days ago. And you write whatever you want in there. And then to change how it's outputted and shown, um, you can go over here and click um, and change different things here. You can show how many decimal places. You can show positive color, uh, negative color. So if you want to output green for plus and down for red, you can do that. You can also go over here and change the refresh rate, meaning how often TC2000 go, goes ahead and uh, redoes the calculation. So I'm going to leave this pretty much as is. So let's press OK. And you can see now it's outputted the value um, for that formula. So to go ahead and um, add a condition column, it's very similar. Um, but you can add different condition sets that you've made previously. Or you can go ahead and create a new condition set. So you click that. And then you click Add Condition. And I'm going to say, um, Bollinger Band breach, so this condition, um, and you can add as many as you want. I'm going to actually write a formula for this and say C uh, minus C40 is greater than 10. And in this box, you can see that after you've written the formula, you can also change a couple different things down here. You can see that you can select um, different options here. You can um, say true five bars in a row. You can change the time frame, a whole bunch of flexibility that TC2000 offers, which I think is excellent. So we're going to leave it like that. Um, this is just a random condition. I don't think this is useful at all. Um, but you can also go ahead and just like the, um, the value condition, you can go ahead and change how it will output in the inside the column. So let's call this um, just test and Let's set it as show dot and true color is green. So that is good. Let's click OK. And you can see that these stocks right here are fulfilling those requirements. And in TC2000, you can actually um, sort by that. So that's really helpful. If you click the top of the column, it'll go ahead and bring all those stocks that meet those requirements to the very top. Um, and that's very useful. And also, if you want to reorganize your column layout, you can right click and click move left or right. And you can move that column wherever you wish. So I like keeping my more important things all the way to the left so that when I have more of my chart open, I can still see the main columns that I use. So that pretty much rounds out the video for today about columns and custom PCF codes. If you have any specific questions, make sure to leave them down below in the comment section. and I'll be sure to get to them and answer them uh, to the fullest of my ability. Uh, but that's it for the video. Thanks so much for watching. And please remember to leave a like down below. I'd very much appreciate it. And I hope you have a fantastic day. And I'll see you guys in future videos.